All right. All right, so we are here at CrossFit Perfectus. Uh, we're going to do something, what do you would call that? Stupid or <laughs> crazy, crazy stupid? Crazy stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, first of all, uh, let me explain. My son, uh, for people that don't know my background, I used to be a professional athlete, and um, my son was born with pneumonia myopathy. It's a uh, it's a disease that affects the muscle. It's a genetic mutation that affects the muscle, so it creates uh, muscle weakness, pretty much. That's the easiest way to explain. So make little things like breathe, eat, walk uh, a lot harder. And the good thing is it gets better with time. But what we need a lot is uh, awareness. And when my son was born, I, I since I've done it 18 Ironmans, it's like, listen, do something stupid for awareness, I can do it. <laughs> and I did a few things already. I did a 24-hour pedal boarding. Uh, we recently ran our first 5K. And one day, a guy had a met here at CrossFit Perfect to said, like, have you heard about the rolling marathon? And I brought it up for, for Graham. And right off the bat, he was just like, let's do it. So <laughs> <laughs> Stupid is a stupid does. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so today, it's basically we're going to talk about what we're going to do and uh, how it's going to be done. But first of all, I wanted to ask Graham, like, why, I mean, why did you just like, because you didn't even hesitate. When I said, I mean, I, I swear to God, I said like, hey, I heard that on CrossFit there's this rowing marathon, which is, for if you don't know, this is a rowing machine. We need to do 42,195 meters on this baby here. Oh, yeah. Uh, nonstop. So, and then when I brought it up for him, he's like, yeah, let's do it. So, can you tell me why you? <laughs> you know, when I first, when I first thought about it, <clears throat> it was more about um, how much awareness can we bring to something that's not very known no, right now. Yeah. Um, I think it's a disease, especially something that I've never heard of before. Um, and then when I encountered your son, uh, when you were doing the competition a, a couple weeks ago, about a month ago here at Box Bash, I just thought it was such an inspiring deal to have your son come in here and see how happy he was with you competing in your first ever CrossFit comp. And I wanted to be a part of something that was bigger than myself. And I think that was the number one goal for me, bringing awareness not only to the disease, but doing something that I've done, never done myself and outside of the box to help somebody else versus just doing something for myself. So um, <clears throat> it's, it's been a great deal working with you, um, getting to learn a little bit more about the disease itself, having you share pictures of your son and, and what you guys go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think you know, that really pulls at my heartstrings a little bit because I'm a father of three children as well. And I can only imagine how I would feel and how I would respond and react if I had one of my kids in the same situation as well. So um, it's very, very important for me to be a part of this and to bring awareness in any aspect that I can. Well, so. we, we really appreciate it. And uh, you, I think you touch uh, a very cool sub subject that a lot of people don't realize. Like I did 18 Ironman just for myself and to be honest, like when I started doing stuff for something bigger than me, it's like the reward that you have is just like, to be honest, like last weekend I crossed the finish line of a 5K, which technically for me should be like Super something that, and, but for, <laughs> like it was such a great joy of having him smiling like for the whole 28 minutes, you know, that I was pushing him. Mm -hmm. So like doing something for, something bigger than yourself it's uh for me it's like it changed my world as an athlete when i did it uh and hopefully you know you can tell us after this experience how you felt but you if know I'm like still it's, alive i will <laughs> yeah <laughs> so as you may know like my my background is swim bike and run you know like i never done um anything that it's more strength wise so what would you say in terms of rowing, what is like, what is the requirements? Like, of course, there's a good chunk of endurance in there, mm. but uh, 
how you say strength wise and you know how you you know from a strength standpoint i don't necessarily know if it's a strength component per se mm -hmm. um but from an endurance and stamina standpoint it's, it's big, it's big. Um, and there's a lot of time and effort that needs to be spent on the rower itself before even trying something like this out so just to give you guys a heads up, we've been training for this. This isn't something that we just decided to do and we hopped on the row and we're gonna go for 42,000 meters. Um, we've been doing a couple of training sessions a week, doing some progressions where we're building up to, to high meters and working on our, our durations on the rower, working on our pace, working on cadence, working on breathing. Um, you know, so I think a lot of it is just a mental aspect. Yeah. Um, how long can you mentally sit on a rower, deal with pain um, and suffering, and how long can you do that for? Um, you know, so it's a, it's a mental grind. Um, I think that's the biggest key here. It's from a physical standpoint, you know, we were physically active. We've been doing CrossFit for a long time. Yeah. You used to be a professional athlete. So I think we had the physical components of that, but not a lot of people have put themselves mentally through something this tough. So I think that's, I think that's the biggest component of this, not strength. Um, it's, it's endurance and stamina and a mental endurance and yeah. mental stamina. You know, how long can you stay out of your own head to exactly. be able to, to succeed at this goal? So. My well, the reason I asked that for the strength is because for me, for example, like I'm used to be all legs, right. and then rolling is gonna have like a good chunk of upper body, right. uh, and then I think that's my uh, a little bit of my weakness, but uh, I think that the most important what scares me on this thing is because. When I did a 24-hour pedal board, I was in different spots all the time. Right. When I did Ironman, you seeing stuff passing by you like, here we're gonna be at the box for like nearly four hours. Right. You know, like so that's gonna be definitely challenging. Four hours in pain, just like you said. You know, like right. you're doing something. So for me, that's gonna be like a huge challenge. Yeah. And you know, that that is one of the the key components of it is being able to. <clears throat> dial it in, find a good playlist, find a good mute, you know, some oh, good yeah. music to listen to, and kind of just zone out. And when you do something with that that involves this much endurance and stamina, it's not necessarily about how fast can I go. Yeah. It's how steady can I maintain exactly, yeah. and can I get through this whole thing within within four hours. Because I think of you know you and myself, you know, my my own personal goal for this one is obviously to finish. Um, and then if I were to put a time domain on it, I'd probably say I want to do it in under three and a half hours. You know, is that possible? I don't know. No. I haven't tried it yet. So um, I've gotten halfway through to, I've done a half marathon last week just to kind of test the waters a little bit and, and the butt hurts a little bit. So so I, what, what, what would you say was your, like the most challenging part of that half marathon? Um, just being uncomfortable for such a long time. Um, I had a really good playlist going with, you know, I had my headphones on and I was listening to some good music and, you know, just got into a zone. Sometimes you just don't, you zone out, you look straight ahead, yeah. you don't even know what's going on. I think what works best for me in this aspect is I don't even look at the screen. So I have the, the screen flipped up so I don't even know where I'm at. That's because, a good idea. Because I feel like, you know, looking at those numbers constantly, I'm constantly giving myself putting myself in a stressful situation mm -hmm. because I'm trying to keep up with the pace or I'm trying to, oh man, I'm falling behind on time or the meters are just not taking yeah. as fast as I want. So, you know, just trying to find a mental balance in there where you're going to be as comfortable as possible being as uncomfortable as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then finding hopefully some good padded shorts to save my butt. <laughs> yeah, that that's going to be, you know, like with my training too, I noticed that, you know, like you start cramping after a while, you know, mm -hmm. of being in the same position and getting numb. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a big component. And it's like, it's nothing like I ever done, you know, because Ironman, you know, when, to be honest, when you get on the run, you always like, you go to one water station to the another one, right. you know, like you always having like here, it's just like I said, you know, like it's like, if you keep looking at the numbers, you're going to go nuts. Right. So exactly. uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, challenge that mm -hmm. is something brand new for me. And I don't know if you, do you ever done like something similar? Cause you've I been mean, in CrossFit for a while. Right. So. I mean, the most I've ever done on a rower per se is, is about 10,000 meters. I've done that a couple times. And what I've liked, what I've done in the past when I've done those 10,000 meter rows is I've actually put myself in a, uncomfortable situation so I've actually put the rower outside when it's 90 degrees outside yeah. and I've tried to row 10,000 meters in 90 degree weather so getting adapted or adapting to an uncomfortable situation so that when I do come to a normal where I can have the box and the temperatures controlled and the music is mm -hmm. controlled um, 
I don't feel as uncomfortable in those situations yes. because I've been more uncomfortable prior to doing that in the training sessions. So frequency, like I said before, frequency on the rower is going to be the key component there. How much can I train before the actual event? And then how, how far do you want to get before the actual event? <laughs> um, I think I'm going to probably try to shoot around uh, 30,000, 35,000 meters. Um, if I can last that long, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's just dealing with being uncomfortable. It's not yeah. necessarily a physically taxing i mean over time it will become physically taxing yeah. um, more so than not but i think um, after after certain probably like halfway through it you know like in iron man we usually say uh mile 80 it's where you divide the boys from the from the men's right, right. because that's where the mental aspect kick in because everybody can go the swim everybody that train of course uh they go to the swim and to 80 mile bike ride but after that it's just like it's pure mental mm -hmm. so i think here on the roll is probably it's gonna hit a little faster of course right but i think probably halfway through it uh oh, yeah. will be and they, i mean when you train for a marathon you never run usually more uh, at least i don't prescribe more than uh, 20 miles because of the pounding and it's a lot but the right. roller it's a lot less pounding so we can actually afford to go like 35,000, just like you said, and right. I think it'll be. Um, yeah, the, the, non, the non weight bearing, and that's why <clears throat> rowing in general is so nice for the general population because we have a lot of people that, not specifically here at this gym, but you know, around the world that have joint issues or bad backs or bad hips, yeah. and, and you know, running for them is just too much impact. Yeah. And, and to get the benefit of running, they can't run long enough or fast enough because exactly. of those, those health implications. So. The, the rowing is a, is a great uh, modification for running because it's still conditioning, it's still endurance and stamina, um, but it's non-weight bearing, so your joints are taking less of a pounding. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now uh, let's talk a little bit of fatherhood. Yes, sir. Um, so you have three kids? Three children. Right. Yeah. And um, uh, how would you, I don't know how to ask that, um, how you describe, for example, because your kids are typical kids, yes, correct? Yes, very active. Uh, very yeah, active. Very active. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, because you can see my challenges, and I tell that everybody, like, you know, like, people say, people look at me sometimes, it's like, oh, I feel bad. If I, listen, don't feel bad, because everybody has challenges. The right. difference, you can see mine. Right. But what would you say, like, in general, it doesn't need to be, like, school-wise or anything like that, just in general, like, you being a business owner, uh, a father, and all that, what is the challenge that you usually go through? Um, you know, finding time for balance. You know, balancing a business, balancing being a husband, balancing being a father, balancing being a friend. You know, I think it's, it, you know, balancing and prioritizing, I think, is the, the main component that I run into as far as a challenge goes. You know, my kids, um, two out of the three kids play competitive sports, so there's a lot of practices, there's a lot of traveling. Um, you know, so I, one of the other main challenges is finding time for yourself, you know, prioritizing yourself because without a better you, you won't be a better dad, you won't be a better husband, exactly. etc. So I think fitness has definitely been my outlet for myself personally to be able to get some personal time for myself to make my life better and benefit those certain areas through fitness. So, um, you know, as far as the other challenges go, it's just, it's just the day to day. It, it just depends on the day, right? Mm -hmm. Because every day is going to be a little bit different. Now, in your case, every day may seem a little kind of the same, but you still deal with different challenges in, in that certain day as well, yeah. too. So, Well, what, one thing I noticed with me is like, uh, for example, my son doing something that it's so normal for for everybody, for me, it's a, like, it's a big celebration, Correct. you know, like, and, and that's what I try to pass to a lot of people. It's like, listen, you know, you need to celebrate those little things because mm -hmm. otherwise they're going to pass it by and you're never going to realize, you know, and, uh, and, but yes, most of my days are pretty much the same, you know, like mm -hmm. in terms of waking up, doing the, his therapies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, like the joy that I get from the little things, uh, I think overcompensate anything in, in, mm -hmm. in the, this world. But it's just, I always like, like, I'm curious because everybody goes to challenges, you know, like right. you, 
you have challenged balancing. I have challenged balancing too because I try to run uh, my business and you know I had to stay home more often than than most dads. But it's always a challenge, and, and right. just like you said, like I gained 50 pounds after he was born, and until I realized, like, listen, I need to take care of myself in order to you know uh, and, and be I able think, to take care of him. And right. And I think what people need to understand is you know. Because just because he has the challenges doesn't mean that doesn't present a challenge for everybody else. Yeah. Um, you know, so you know, having children will present that challenge, but having a children a child with a disability obviously presents a whole nother basket of challenges. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what it's been in, so encouraging about your situation and learning more about you and your son and the bond that you guys have is that you're so positive all the time. <laughs> You know, you're, you, you seem very positive. And like you said, you celebrate those small victories when there could be a lot of parents that have been presented with this and they, they instead of fight, they flight. You know, they don't take care of that situation. And then they, then they go into a deep depression. They stop taking care of their health. They stop taking care of themselves. So, um, you know, I think that's a big com- component is just seeing how positive you are with such a situation that's really hard and challenging to deal with on a day-to-day basis for you guys. Yeah, I, I remember because... Uh, when my son was born, uh, we, we were in one hospital and you had to be transferred to another one with the specialists and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was fortunate enough to uh, change his first diaper and stuff like that because my, my wife was still recovering on, uh, from the birth because it was like a 28-hour labor birth. So she was extremely ex- exhausted. Right. But I went there and then when I came back and I told her like what was going on, um, I don't know if you've seen the movie Gladiator. Mm-hmm. You know that scene that he's about to fight that really big army? Yeah. And he said, like, we have a better chance if we stick together, mm-hmm. you know, like, put our forces together. That was exactly what I told her. Like, listen, yeah. if we stick together, uh, we put our forces together, we got this, you know. Right. And because then, you guys could have easily been presented with this challenge, and then that could have split you and your wife apart. Yes, yeah. Have, yeah. Well, you, you know, that could have done a, presented a lot of other challenges yeah. where you guys are working alone versus together. Yeah, yeah like one of the uh, uh, things that we do in our foundation is exactly that, because 80% of special needs family, they get divorced because of the stress. Yeah. So um, that's one of the things that I create awareness for, because uh, like I said, it's so easy to get in depression because of challenges like that and you know like fortunate enough my wife and I we were uh, athletes before and we were like you know what muscles can be trained we can we can do this and mm-hmm. let's go for it so yeah. that's the main reason why we are doing those things and you know like when it, it it opens my heart like so much when I see guys like you say like hey you know what I do it with you and you know, let's go for it. And yeah. I think it's it's a beautiful thing. And well, I think people like you in your situation need support. You know, and yeah. I think that's what's going to create a positive environment is if you do have support, not just from family members and, but, yeah. you know, therapists and other things. I think outside people that really don't know the details of your situation to the full, that they're still going to give you support for that because I think people need, need a shoulder to lean on occasionally. And exactly. as strong as you can be or as strong as you're perceived or whatever the case may be, we all have mental breakdowns. We all have physical we breakdowns all do, occasionally. Yeah. You know, we're human. So. And that, that's the important thing you talk about it because a lot of dads, they try to be like, hey, no, I'm so strong. I don't do this. I don't do that. And then later on explode. And I think fitness is a good way to kind of relieve that, especially for for men that usually don't like to talk about uh, feelings as much, you know, right. like just go out and, you know, do it's CrossFit, a, do yeah. whatever. It's, it's a release. You know, it's a release, so, mm-hmm. and it's a very uh, important thing to, to talk about it, men, mental health, you, you know, so. You now, uh, what would you like to add in all of this? Uh, what, do you, what do you think it's, it's uh, uh, besides the challenge, what do you think is going to be driving you to finish this, uh, this challenge? Well, like, just to know, like I said before, just to know that I'm doing this for somebody else. I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing this for a cause. Um, you know, when I train a lot of my athletes, I always tell them, you better be training with a purpose. Don't just train just to train because then there's no purpose. There's no direction. There's no goal. Yeah. Um, this is not about me. So I feel like that makes it a lot easier to be able to succeed at this because I'm doing it for somebody else and something else. Um, 
So, you know, I, is it going to be challenging? I, I don't want to sit up here and be like, oh, 42,000 meters, that's just going to be simple. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to struggle, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have some mental barriers in there too. But um, when I was training the other day, all I could think about was I was just having pictures of your son flash through my head. And I'm like, that's, that's why, you know, that's the purpose why. And I just, like I told you before, I don't think there's enough awareness for this, for this disease. Because like I said, before I had met you, never even heard of it at yeah. all never even seen somebody with it at all um so it's definitely opened up my awareness it's opened up my eyes and it's and it's intriguing to me to see if i can do the same for somebody else or for a group of other people and uh, you're the best source to do it so <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. the you know like it's it's one thing it's i was going to say it's uh we we often talk about nemalai myopathy but there is like a lot of muscle conditions that the symptoms are very similar to to my son Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's like, for example, SMA, which uh, spinal muscle atrophy, uh, it gets worse with time, but their symptoms are pretty much uh, the same. Mm -hmm. But they made it so much awareness that now there is a, a like type of a vaccine that stopped the progression of the disease. It doesn't cure, but it stops. And that's why doing those things for nemaline myopathy and doing those crazy stuff, uh, it's good exactly because of that. Um, now, I think you kind of answered, but how you you thinking about dealing with the mental challenge that's going to go through on this challenge? Uh, you know, like, like you said, it's going to be close to four hours. Mm -hmm. It's going to be closed. Uh, it's going to be painful. Uh, and non training, you're probably already training that, but um, what you do as an athlete and what you've done it before, not only for this challenge, what you've done it before, because you've done CrossFit competitions, you've done other things. So what are the things that you usually do in order to overcome those challenges and, uh, during the competition and stuff? like? Well, just, just a tip for the people out there that like to challenge themselves. Well, first of all, I think you have to be doing something you like. <laughs> you know, and you know, if I, I'm the one who signed myself up for those competitions and I'm the one who said yes to this rowing. And so I understand that there's going to be a challenge that's presented with those certain things. Um, but, you know, I think what I've learned just through CrossFit to help me at the, to this up to this point now is that a lot of people can work outside of their comfort zone. They're just not used to it and they're not comfortable with it. So um, I'm OK with being uncomfortable. And I'm okay with being outside of the box because I think with my experience with over the last five years with CrossFit five plus years is that it's helped me build that adaptation to that. Um, it's made me stronger mentally. It's made me obviously stronger physically, um, but it's also made me realize that, you know, th this is going to be hard, but that's why you're doing this because without a challenge, there's no progress being made. Yeah. And, and I think there needs to be some struggle. And that's, that's why, you know, talking about CrossFit related to this, I think that's a huge component of CrossFit is pushing people to a limit that's still safe, but that's not very comfortable for them because they're not used to being in that place. Um, so that's that's kind of been my mentality as far as the training sessions go for this, is just know that it's not going to be very comfortable, understand that, and just know that there's a bigger purpose than that. So like I like to talk about being uncomfortable the whole, the whole time because as an athlete, that's what I seek of it. Right. And, you know, like... Can you describe the feeling that you have? Because everybody has different. Like for me, like when I do something that is uncomfortable for me, I feel alive, you know, like I feel right. powerful. Right. You know, like I feel like, okay, this is awesome. You know, like I, whatever I thought it was a limit, there is not there anymore. I'm right. in another level. Right. Uh, but for you, what's, what would you describe that, the feeling that you get for uh, getting uncomfortable? Just, and, um, being uncomfortable, yeah. Um, so the, the feeling that I get of being uncomfortable is it's not necessarily the feeling that I get at that point in time. Yeah. It's the gratification that I get of the reward at the end of that time. So I'm always looking a couple steps ahead. I'm not looking at what that certain situation is. I'm looking at what is going to be the outcome and what's going to be the risk versus reward after this outcome. Um, so I look forward to finishing for a purpose. I look forward to completing, you know, going through that pain is just a part of the process. The end goal in the process mm -hmm. is to get that gratification from seeing your son happy or bringing awareness or getting, you know, donations and raising money for awareness. And because awareness without awareness, we don't have 
any research. We, and without donations, we don't have any, you know, we don't have money to, to, to fund to, yeah. these, these researchers to do more research to find hopefully a cure one of these days. So um, that's, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm not necessarily thinking about this next 5,000 meters or the next 5,000 meters. Yeah. I'm thinking about all those other things that happen at the end. Um, so it's it's for me it's about crossing that finish line, Good, yeah. and the process is just gonna it's gonna take me where it wants to take me. My mind will take me where it wants to take me. My body will take me where it wants to take me. But the, I'm crossing that finish line, and and that's gonna be the end goal. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, so just so you guys know, the my foundation we work we help a family with physical disabilities thrive, because just like Graham said, like I'm always so positive about it, and but there is a reason why we did this, like. My wife and I, we worked and, you know, we changed our diet and we did all that stuff because, you know, you can find joy in every challenge you have in life, you know, like that's one thing we try to pass it on. And we work with uh, a few professionals that can help people out and that's why we get the donations. Uh, we usually do either help the kids to go outside more or more better mobility or changing their diet and or ch even changing the parents diet because that's going to reflect on the kids mm -hmm. and that's why uh, I do those things that's why Graham joined me because he's he's a coach he's a health enthusiastic and you know like so that's the main reason we're doing all this so December 12th Correct. <laughs> Let the pain begin. Let the pain begin. Yeah. We're going to be live, okay? You guys are going to be able to see live. And uh, if there is anybody, you, you're more on that. Like, would you, like, I would like to see more gyms maybe joining us, right. uh, not right. only in Colorado, but uh, in other places. Right. Um, you know, there's, a, there's, a <clears throat> there's over 15,000 affiliates worldwide. You know, if we can touch 2% of that, if we could touch 1%, you know, anything like that, where it's just maybe even just one unique participant from a couple of different gyms, yes, yeah. you know, that's, that's bringing awareness. You know, are we here, are, are we going to make a change, a drastic change with this event by itself? Maybe or maybe not, yeah. but we're still continuing the awareness aspect of it. Um, and piggybacking off of that, you can sponsor us as well. So Rich yeah. is going to be a sponsored athlete. I will be a sponsored athlete. And then one of our athletes, other athletes, Robert Mayer, he'll also be doing the marathon row with us. So you can go onto the website yes, and yeah. you can go to the bottom and you can actually sponsor us. So if you wanted to sponsor a penny every thousand meters or 25 cents every 10,000 meters or, yes. you know, you can sponsor an athlete that way and, and, just, and just show that not necessarily from a monetary standpoint, but you're still aware, you're still here, you're supportive exactly. of the cause yeah. and you're still spreading the word. Um, we will have some Facebook posts, so if you guys would love to share those, I think that's going to help spread awareness. Yeah. Social media is such a huge platform these days. Exactly, and plus, like, we're going to be live, so even, like, if some companies want to donate, like, certain things that, you know what I mean, like that, we can use it uh, online or uh, when we are live and things like that, you're more than welcome to uh, join us. Uh, and Like I said, it's all for... A really good cause and as, a, as a small business owner it's it's nice to see somebody supporting you and it's nice to give that back so I'd like to pay it forward and that's what I'm gonna do so CrossFit Profectus is gonna donate some money towards the foundation as well I appreciate um, it. so that will be part of just some of the awareness aspect of it and and hopefully we can bring s some more people in and and maybe get some other small companies involved and you know it is it's, it's a nice tax write-off at the end of the year so mm -hmm. if it's something that you wanted to donate and we're not we're not looking for huge donations um you know if you want to donate a lot then you can <laughs> we're, but, not gonna, we're not gonna we're not gonna deny yeah, right but you <laughs> but, know i think i think the the key aspect of it here is awareness first found it you know building building some monetary for more research and then just going from there so yeah so i mean i think it's it's like he said it, it it's a benefit for everybody, right. you know, and then, uh, like I usually say, like my son brings me so much joy and uh, I started to notice that everybody that he meets, he brings a lot of joy uh, right. as well. So I think the way the world is going right now, we can all benefit from actual love, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? So I, would agree. I think that, you know, that's a, a, a good way. And plus, like, if we can, like, our foundation is new, but we already helped like two families and the joy that we get from helping them, like 
one of the kids we just were able to buy like a small pool for he can do water therapy in it. Uh, and then another kid we were able to buy uh, a ramp for the wheelchair so he can go in and out of the house with no problem. Mm -hmm. So little things like this makes a huge difference in somebody else's life. Okay. And you reduce a lot of the stress of you know, just going in and out, you know, like, because we have a lot of doctor's uh, visits and we do a lot of stuff that we go outside of the house. And plus, like when my son was born with, the, the, with this condition, I promised myself two things. Like, I'm not going to put him in an institution because his place is at home. Because mm -hmm. that actually was brought it up a few times in the hospital saying, like, you can put him in an institution. I'm like, listen, he's my son. He's going to be in my house. Right. That's it. Right. And the other thing is we're going to live a normal life as much as possible. Right. You know, and I take him to the gym with me. I do like all this stuff for a reason because he's my son. Right. You know, like I'm not going to let him just sit on the, on the bed for the rest of his life, you know, right. just because he has a condition. You know, and I think that's another part of the awareness aspect is regardless of the disability, I think parents need to understand that they shouldn't just bottleneck or, or individuals shouldn't just bottleneck themselves into a, hey, I'm disabled. That's yes, what I'm going to yeah, be defined yeah. as. Because if they had a choice, they would probably say, you're an asshole. I'm not. I am disabled, but I shouldn't be defined by my disability. Exactly. So living a normal life, and I think me piggybacking on the whole parenting aspect of it, one of the reasons, the other reasons I'm doing this is because if my kids see me doing this, I'm just being a role model for them, so maybe exactly. they can go help and support some other cause. Exactly. Maybe they can be a part of something bigger than themselves, because I want people to understand that it's, it's more about you. Not, not about you, it's more about everybody but, else. Yes. Um, you know, it's a collective, you know, it, like it I, think, a collective. I think we as humans, we have like not only our own missions to you know, right. accomplish, but as a collective, we have a whole you know, like as a society, something that we need to move on to something bigger, you know, like in better and you know, always getting better. And I think like we actually had a doctor that uh, when we talk about having a second kid and he asked like if it was a good, we asked if it was a good thing. And then the guy said like, listen, your kid is a good thing for everybody else in the world because, mm -hmm. you know, like getting that sense of society and helping each other, it's, it's key, mm -hmm. you know, like for for a healthy society. So I think that's right. um, a, really, a really good thing that we can focus on it, you know? Right. And plus, like, talking about, about the parenting, like, the other day, my son was trying to, because I tried not to baby him, you know? Like, I really tried to pass that on to him, what I learned as an athlete, that, like, listen, you try it until you can't, just don't give up. And then he was trying to put this uh, lid on top of the, on the, the pot, and he was like had such having a hard time. And I was recording him like for two minutes, like I just wanted to grab the thing and put it for him. <laughs> but I said like, if I do this, he's gonna get used to off like, oh, let somebody do for me. I'm disabled. Like, and that's not what I want to pass to him. What I want right. to pass to him is like, listen, like, I got this. I, I gotta do my best. If I can absolutely not do it I will ask for help and that's what I tried to pass it was the hardest two minutes of my life but in the end he did it and he was so proud of himself you know mm -hmm. so uh, it, that's not something I want to take it off from him and I just want him to right. and learn like I, and experience like I, like I stated with the whole fitness realm without struggle there's no progress that, exactly. and this was just a life lesson for him to know yeah. that it did take me a lot longer I did struggle but, but I did he, it. he did it. Yeah. But I did it. And like his sense of pride when he did it, it was like so amazing that that was worth more than anything and, else. And I but think that's a, part of this event. Most of this event, that's what I'm going to feel when I finish. It's just a sense of pride. Not that I completed it. It's nothing about me. It's like what I've done to help maybe further his his life and research towards his aware, you know, his yeah. disability and awareness. So uh, pride is definitely going to be a big thing that I, when I fall off the rower and lay on the ground for a little while because yeah. I don't want to stand up or can't maybe. Um, that's all I'm going to be thinking about is just how prideful I am that I was able to do something so big for somebody else and not even think about myself the whole time. Mm -hmm. so. so check it out, man. It's going to be from yeah. 11 to 3 Mountain Time, uh, live on Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, the channels are a dead on mission easy to remember right uh, and make sure you guys if you, if you want come to the gym you can cheer us on you can do some videos of 
pictures or you can you can be a part of this because we are doing a four person relay team a part of it as yes, well yeah. so not only if you not if you don't feel like you're up to doing it the whole marathon by yourself come in with a team of people a support group right yeah. and row chunks of the marathon to help build to that 42,195 meters bring more awareness yeah. and then if you want to do a, another gym too uh, and join us at the same time maybe or yeah. something like that you can do a relay or you can do the goal is to accumulate as many meters possible uh, all around uh, US or maybe you know let's start with Colorado first right. but maybe US yeah. and now uh, I have a question do you see yourself maybe doing this one more time? <laughs> <laughs> maybe next year we do it again. It depends. Number two. It, it, well, it depends on the, it depends on the mission, right? right? If it's just for me to do it, probably not. Um, just to say that I could do it again, I don't know if I'd want to do that again. But if it was for a purpose, if it was for the Go Loop Foundation again, you bet. I'd, I'd definitely, I'd definitely put myself back on this rower and go through it again. So that's not something, you know. Um, I wouldn't steer away from now would I want to do this like I said on my own for no reason <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't think anybody probably. can I'll do stick that. to 500 rounds of 500 <laughs> meters <laughs> it'll save my butt and my arms but yeah. no no I would definitely do this again if we were um, if we were to bring awareness towards the Golu Foundation or if we were to bring awareness towards to other, other disabilities or fundraisers or whatever the case may be then you bet I would you know I put my ass right back on this road with it with without a doubt all right so. and then if you guys stop by the gym Maybe bring some food. Right? Yes. Bring, some, bring us we're gonna, some Gatorade. We're going to need something afterwards. <laughs> bring us a good playlist of music because we're going to run out. Yeah, I was actually, that was my thought today in the morning. Like I said, like, we should make a, like a four hour playlist yeah. of something really that gets us going. Yeah. And we should actually plan out like halfway through, maybe we pump up the music. You know what I mean? It right. started a little calmer and then halfway through we just yeah. bump it up something something like it's that it's just going to be getting on there and doing it for time yeah. you know and just making sure that everything's set up and making sure that we have waters next to us and gatorades next to us and yeah. um you know we're properly set up so i think that's the whole training aspect of it is you have to prepare yourself beforehand versus just going into the battle without any preparation because that's where you could really have a downfall yeah. or uh, you could bonk or something like that <clears throat> And that would uh, definitely be discouraging if that were to happen. So no. we, need, we need to make sure that we're all training on the, you know, at least a couple times a week and getting in our miles and getting our butts on the seat and getting used to that. So, no. um, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Should be fun. So be fun. 11 to 3. Come check and us out. Uh, the goal is to, of course, uh, to finish, but uh, to finish under four hours. Right. You know, because. And if it's, under, if it's not under four hours, we'll go until we finish. Yeah. So. But so stay tuned. Uh, check it out. Uh, the our my website, the foundation website is golookwagon.foundation, or you can go to a dead on a and or if you have any questions, you can uh, email uh, CrossFit Perfectus. Um, CrossFit Perfectus at gmail.com. You can also contact us through our community or uh, not our community page, but our Facebook page through CrossFit Perfectus. Uh, Rich has a Facebook page. I have a Facebook page as well, too. So definitely a lot of outlets to be able to contact us and be a part of something bigger than yourself. Yes. So. 42,195 meters nothing, from the Malay Myopathy. Nothing less, nothing more. Exactly. <laughs> Once we hit 195, <laughs> that's it. I'm off the roll. I'm rolling on it. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you, I guys. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. My ass is hurting just sitting there for 38 <laughs> minutes. Man.